Jeff Brodsky, former KGB spy, is joining us now. So listening to what he was saying, Jack, help us understand the tactics for recruitment. And would he be unknowingly, uh, as it has been characterized, aware that he was trying to be either recruited or that they are trying to gather information from him? Uh, well, le let's start with what Carter Page was doing while he was in Moscow. He was working for Merrill Lynch, doing a lot of business with Gazprom. That's the Russian company that uh, pretty much has a monopoly on oil and ga uh, natural gas. A huge company. And if there's any company that is under control of the Russian government and Putin himself, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, historically, uh, those kinds of enterprises were infiltrated by agents. Why would that have changed? So it is quite likely that uh, Mr. Page also had contact with other agents in, while doing business. And it is quite likely that they were giving reports back to their handlers, whether they were direct employees or unofficial uh, you know, uh, uh, workers on behalf of, the, uh, of uh, intelligence services. And it's quite likely there's a dossier uh, about Carter Page and a lot of folks who do business uh, uh, in, in Moscow with with those companies. So that's how it works. And then was, then we find out, you know, how can we, you know, I'm now the, you know, the intelligence agent. Mm -hmm. How can we use that information? Mm -hmm. How can we, uh, you know, and, and, and recruiting somebody is sort of like would be the crown jewel. You've got to be really careful because you're most likely going to tick them off and, and, and not get any value out of this uh, particular individual. So find a way to hook them and uh, feed them information, work with them in some way, and apparently they did. Hmm. It's, it's almost like a grooming process? Would that be <laughs> a right Not as much grooming. It's like, you know, uh, ha having, having an asset there that, who doesn't know that there are an asset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you're playing also into into what, uh, you know, uh, greed, arrogance, ego. Uh, you know, if, if you are being built up by the Russian government as being an expert in one of the most influential people in foreign policy in the United States, that feels good, doesn't it? And this may get to, to, to my question here, why Carter Page? Because he was not in the, the upper echelon of foreign policy decisions for the Trump campaign or Trump transition, but if they were trying to get someone who could influence the then-candidate Trump or now-President Trump, why go for Carter Page, who, at least by the, the reporting we have, wasn't really on the inside inside? Well, well you, you take what you can get. Hmm. And obviously there were relationships there. There, 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 was, a, there was an angle. You, you know, you, you know I, when, when I was uh, oper operating in this country, they asked me to you know, get in touch with all kinds of uh, high-level individuals. Well, that wasn't possible. So Carter Page was a, most likely a very uh, inviting target. Yeah, is it possible that, or even credible to think that, that he did not know that he was being it is. It is quite likely that he didn't know. Okay. There's one thing, you know, there's a statement that he made that uh, he sort of, he was aware that uh, when you deal with Russian uh, business people that uh, they could be infiltrated by uh, Secret Service. I think that's an after-the-fact statement. I, in my uh, opinion, Americans are rather naive when it comes to these types of issues. Case in point, you know, how many, how many times have you heard that people are hacked because they are uh, subject to phishing operations? We are quite naive as a country. There's a whole lot of that stuff going on there, and, and I think we need to be, uh, as, a, uh, as a country, as a population, be, become more aware of these things. So behind, besides the email hacks and the, and the propaganda and the trying to infiltrate uh, that orbit, as it's called, the, the Trump orbit, uh, what, what else might they have done or how much do you think they truly may have influenced this election? Well, you know, now, now you're asking me to step out of my sandbox, and I'm, I can't do that. You know, I, I can't speculate. Okay. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is they tried as much as they could. At this point, I, I believe there is no evidence that they actually succeeded. As a matter of fact, if indeed they were after having better relationships and having the sanctions lifted, it backfired, which happens very often in an intelligence type operation that, you know, you can't control all the players and their egos involved and, and their individual agendas involved. So what happened right now, we, we don't have good relations. Yeah.
Right. You know, much of what we're discussing this morning is the likelihood and the plausibility of some of these ideas. And without the full information from the FBI, we don't know. That's right. Absolutely. But if they try to infiltrate Carter Page, what's the likelihood that there are more or potentially more that they, they use to, to try to get into the inside? Uh, more attempts or quite, others? Quite likely. Yeah. Quite likely. Huh. Uh, success? Don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's why there's an investigation and I would hope that there are not any more leaks about this stuff. Let the F FBI do their work.